So yes, you can't change the original message of our Creator, but uh, obviously these words according to man aren't the original words of our Creator. Islam affirms him and yet completely contradicts the things that he did. And because of that, Islam simply self-destructs. Okay. So what I'll do here, bear with me one second before I start this uh, two, two minutes. Jesus from the Quran. Okay, so let's. what does the Quran say about Jesus? It says, to say, O Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 84. Say, O Prophet, we believe in Allah and what was revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants. And what was given to Moses and Jesus and other prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them. And to him we fully submit. Right? So we, we believe that the words of Allah that were revealed to the prophets and the messengers is legitimate. Right? We don't believe the words of the Bible are legitimate. And so, by example, uh, it says, Indeed, we have sent revelation to you, O prophet, as we sent revelation to Noah and the prophets after him. We also sent revelation to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants, as well as Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon. And to David, we gave the Psalms. This is talking about the original words that were given to the prophets and the messengers. Now, it goes on to say, the Messiah would never be too proud to be a servant. This is what the Quran is saying about Jesus, peace be upon him. The, the, the Messiah would never be too proud to be a servant, nor would the angels nearest to Allah. Those who are, are too proud and arrogant to worship him will be brought before him altogether. And when we say Allah again, we're talking about our, our creator and a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. And again, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, it says, Indeed, those who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary, who have fallen into, have fallen into disbelief, say, Who has the power to prevent Allah if he chose to destroy the Messiah, the son of Mary, his mother, and everyone in the world altogether? To Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and every, everything in between. He creates whatever he wills, and Allah is most capable of everything. So Jesus, peace be upon him, is in submission to this very God. This God that, is, based on these words, if they were taken out of the context of the Quran, and you just heard these words, everyone in here that is God conscious would agree with what you've heard here, ex except for the word Allah. Allah is simply an Arabic word that means God. But you would agree with everything that's being stated there, and so would Jesus, peace be upon him, the consistency of a man that finds who he is. We'll kick it over to David for his two minutes. Kenny uh, brings up what the Quran says about Jesus, and this is a sort of an interesting topic in, in itself. The Quran affirms that Jesus is born of a virgin, unlike, uh, unlike other prophets. Uh, so Jesus is born of a virgin, according to the Quran. According to the Quran, Jesus lives the most miraculous life in history. He goes around performing all these miracles. Uh, according to the Quran, Jesus is the Word of Allah, which again in the, in the Gospel of John is a is a uh, title of divinity. Uh, but Jesus is the Word of Allah, meaning that Allah speaks Jesus out. Very different from the way Allah creates everything else. When Allah creates, it's it. He just says, "Be," and it is. Um, so Jesus is the word of Allah. Jesus is called a spirit from Allah. Uh, Jesus is called the Messiah. Jesus is said to that he's going to return. And Jesus is sinless. Why is this relevant? Well, he, look, Muhammad, Muhammad's not born of a virgin. Muhammad doesn't perform these miracles. Uh, Muhammad's not the word of Allah. Muhammad's not a spirit from Allah. Muhammad's not the Messiah. And Muhammad is not sinless. He's told that he has to uh, repent of his sins and ask forgiveness for his sins. So what's amazing is that Jesus in the Quran is vastly superior to Muhammad and every other prophet in the Quran. And the real question would be why? Why is Jesus so incredibly unique even in the Muslim sources? What's the point? Muslims don't have an answer. They can just say Allah knows best. But the real explanation, if Kenny, if Kenny wants to say, hey, you know, you have to go to your scripture and you have to really think about these things and think if these things make sense. Why is Jesus so radically different when he is just another prophet? Well, it makes sense if Muhammad is basically uh, copying things that Christians said without understanding the implications of them. It makes perfect sense in a Christian context where Jesus is the incarnate son. It makes perfect sense for Jesus to be so radically unique. It makes no sense in Islam. So thank you, Kenny. We have another reason to think that Islam has some problems here. And so here we go down the... Oh, she, that's actually the last one we can do before we go to the closing. Oh, okay. 
Okay. And the closing will be you first, though, Kenny. Okay. So you'll have a full five minutes, and the floor is all yours. Okay, so there, there we go down the red herring uh, uh, trail again, uh, where he's gone to back to Muhammad, peace be upon him, because the reality of, of it is uh, set out to prove in this debate that the consistency of a man defines who he is, and Jesus, peace be upon him, by the literal etymological sense of the word, is indeed a Muslim. He was one living in submission to the will of our Creator. Yes, the Quran confirms the, that Jesus uh, was born of a virgin and the miracles and that Jesus was a word from Allah. And matter of fact, the Quran says in his comparison to, uh, you know, that God says just be. Well, he just said be about Jesus. He said, matter of fact, the Quran says the similitude is Jesus. Of, of Jesus is that of the likeness of Adam. And then Allah said, Kun fayakun, be, and he is. Just like he said, let there be light, and let there be this, and let there be that. Kun fayakun, be, and he is. And so Jesus, peace be upon him, Obi-Wan Kenobi, whatever you want to call this guy in this picture here, could he say the same thing? Did he say, Kun fayakun, and the crater existed? No, on the contrary. Kun fayakun, be, and Jesus was. Allah Akbar, God is the greatest, and Jesus declared that himself, as I mentioned in my opening statement, the Father is greater than I, the Father is greater than all. In the terminology, Father, it might be a period word or whatever, but uh, um, again, we don't believe he would use that terminology because of the confusion, but nevertheless, he's still declaring that our, our God, our creator, is greater than all. So they, it says, those who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary, have certain, certainly fallen into disbelief once again. The Messiah, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. Many messengers had come and gone before him. His mother was a woman of truth. They both ate food. To, and so, and it says, see how we see the, uh, see how we make the, the signs clear to them. Yet see how they are deluded from the truth. It goes on to say in the Quran, the disbelievers among the children of Israel were condemned in the revelations of David and Jesus, son of Mary. That was for disobedience and for violations. And on the day of judgment, Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, remember my favor upon you and your mother and how I supported you with the Holy Spirit. So you spoke to people in your infancy and adulthood, how I taught you writing wisdom and the Torah and the gospel, how you molded a bird from clay by my will and breathed into it and it became a real bird by my will and how you healed the blind and the lepers by my will and how you brought forth dead uh, to life by my will and I prevented the children of Israel from harming you when you came to them with clear proofs and the disbelievers among them said, this is, this is nothing but pure magic. And one more verse. Remember, when, when the di disciples said, O Jesus, son of Mary, would your Lord be willing to send down to us a table spread with food from heaven? And Jesus answered, Fear Allah, if you are truly believers. Now, this is consistent with, with a person who would say, Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is one. For the Father is greater than I. The Father is greater than all. It would be consistent with a man who would routinely, as these Christian uh, scholars that I've mentioned, have said themselves. Muslims don't have to say it. Jesus lived every day of his life, according to um, uh, Frank Lobach, every day of his life consistently in submission to the will of God, our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our God, our creator, whatever you want to refer to our creator as we say Allah in the Arabic language. But nevertheless, I set out to demonstrate that um, and, and basically uh, clarify from the Muslim side what it is that we mean when we say Jesus was a Muslim. And he's conceded the point that a person who is in submission to the will of our creator, Okay, well, he said, all right, well, we'll take that. If that's part of the definition, well, yes, it is part of the definition. And that's part of the definition that we do indeed mean when we say Jesus was a Muslim. So I thank everyone for listening. I mean no disrespect with any, uh, for anything that I've said. And surely all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final servant and seal of our prophets. Allah Akbar. Thank you very much, Kenny, for that closing statement. We'll kick it over to David for five minutes as well. Thanks very much, David. The floor is all yours. All right. Uh, Kenny says that his uh, goal has been accomplished here. He wanted to show that Jesus uh, was a Muslim in a strict etymological sense. Uh, that would mean that any person in, the, in history who believes he's submitting to God it has submitted to God. Um, I'm totally fine with, I'm, I'm totally fine if you want to say anyone can submit to God by doing anything. 
um, but uh, kind of irrelevant for the way Muslims generally mean that Jesus was a Muslim, certainly irrelevant to the way the Quran uh, calls Jesus a Muslim. But uh, as I always tell Kenny, I'm willing to go down the road you want to go down. You just got to pay the toll. And the toll here is that if Jesus truly submitted to God uh, and the Quran affirms our scriptures that say what the things he said about himself, then Islam has to be false. Muhammad got it wrong. So if Kenny is, is willing to to uh, throw the Quran and Muhammad under the bus to score an etymological point. Again, I'll go down that road with him. He's happy to pay the, he's happy to pay the toll. Um, Kenny said that Jesus, uh, that, that God created Jesus just by saying me and so on. No, uh, the, the Quran says that Jesus is the word of Allah. So notice that's different. Other things, if, if Allah wants to create a bottle, Allah says be and a bottle pops into existence. There are exceptions to this rule when we talk about the spirit. That's something that Allah breathes out. So this originates from within Allah. And Jesus was the word of Allah. Uh, this originates from within Allah. So there's something different uh, even here. Um, minor points. Uh, Kenny said that, that, the, that the Gospel of John doesn't call Jesus God. I mean, the book literally, the opening verse is, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And if that's not clear enough, it goes on to say that the word created everything that's been created. And then it says the word became flesh. So the word that became flesh, Jesus, created everything that's been created. John uh, John chapter 8, Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. Why do the people there pick up stones to stone him for blasphemy? Well, because unlike someone who, who might hear that today, they understood this is the name that God referred to himself by in the book of Exodus. So they took this as Blasphemy. Uh, towards the end of the Gospel of John, Jesus' apostle Thomas calls him my Lord and my God. And then you have all these passages about Jesus uh, being the final judge of all humanity, which, according to the Old Testament, that would have been God. Jesus is claiming that for himself. Jesus says that he's the one who judges everyone, which, according to both the Bible and the Quran, is what God is supposed to do. Uh, if Jesus wasn't, if Jesus meant that he's merely a, a human prophet, He's got some problems there. So we talked about Allah. If Allah is telling Jews and Christians to judge by our scriptures and he doesn't mean it, Allah is a terrible communicator. Well, if Jesus meant that he's a merely human prophet, Jesus is a terrible communicator. So that happens to be the Islamic solution for everything. No one somehow means what they say. Whether you're talking about Allah or Muhammad or Jesus or his followers, According to modern Muslim da'is, none of them mean what they say. They all have some sort of Tourette syndrome and they keep blurting things out uh, that they don't actually mean. Um, so Islam means submission. I have to say, if you want to submit to God and God orders uh, you to uh, judge by scriptures, then like, guess what? In order to obey, for us to uh, submit to Allah, at least for, for Christians to submit to Allah, we would have to obey our scriptures, which would lead us away from Muhammad and away from Islam. Uh, so just to, just to recap, you've got the Bible, which confirms all sorts of things about Jesus that contradict Islam. And the one we focused on is Jesus claimed to be the son of God, because this is all over the gospel that we are ordered to judge by. And Islam says that this is the worst possible sin anyone can commit. There's no way out of this. There's no way out of this. If someone else could say, I don't believe that any of that happened. I believe these scriptures were made up centuries later. Or I believe that Jesus did say these things, but I believe he was crazy. You could say all those things. You are A Muslim who believes in the Quran is not allowed to say those things. Because Allah has ordered them to adhere to certain things, and he has affirmed certain people and certain scriptures as authoritative. So you don't have those options. You are We are sent to scriptures as the authoritative scriptures about Jesus, and they completely contradict Islam, and so they fall apart. Uh, the the Dawa uh, Da'is today uh, tend to try to get around this by basically misrepresenting the Quran and misrepresenting the Bible. And what's weird is I understand that five centuries ago. If you were living five centuries ago and you recognize, wait, the Quran's affirming these scriptures and these scriptures contradict the Quran, wasn't exactly a safe place to say that sort of thing. You get your head chopped off. But Kenny, you are living in a different time and you are free to recognize the Quran is affirming scriptures that completely contradict the Quran. And so there are two possibilities. If, if, if Christians have the word of God, then Islam is false because Islam contradicts our scriptures. If we don't have the word of God, Islam is false because Islam affirms our scriptures. Either way, Islam is false.
Thank you very much, David, for that closing as well. We'll have about 20 minutes of Q&A. So if you happen to have a question, I only ask that first we have questions that are related to the debate per se, and then more extraneous questions if you have them, as well as, we didn't get to mention it before, but there are bathrooms just outside of this room. So if you go through these doors, they'll be right across the hall in case you need to use the restroom. And we also have DebateCon 4. We just launched tickets for it. It's in Dallas, Texas. It's this November, November 4th. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be great. So if you're listening online as well, check out the description box. We have the link for DebateCon 4 tickets there. But with that, we're going to jump into the Q&A. Thanks very much. Matt, we're ready for you. Thank you. Uh -oh. Who's he going after? Hey, guys. I have two questions, but it would be unfair, so I flipped the coin. And sorry, Kenny, you lost. Let's um, <laughs> sorry. My understanding, because this debate is, was he's a Muslim? Both of you are saying that you believe that Jesus submitted himself to the will of the Creator. And both of you are saying that Jesus did not submit himself to Islam, as we understand it today. So, I have three names, and I would like to know from Kenny, would you defend or not for each of these three, that they were also most John the Baptist, Constantine the Great in the first, and David Wood. So, uh, no, I, I mentioned in my opening statement that a person, um, to be a Muslim in the, uh, even, even in the etymological sense of the word, um, requires someone who's submitting themselves to the will of our Creator and our Creator alone. Um, otherwise, you, matter of fact, he made reference at the end of his video, he made reference to, uh, I could be a Buddhist. Well, no, I couldn't be a Buddhist because I am a person who submits my will to the will of my Creator and my Creator alone. So if John the Baptist, I don't know much about uh, Constantine. I've heard that, uh, different, I've read different things about Constantine. Um, and I, who, who's the third person you mentioned in that, please? David Wood. David Wood. Oh, this character. Never hit me. <laughs> yeah, so... No, uh, I wouldn't call them Muslims with the with the uh, with the current definition of the word, uh, meaning that they are people who associate partners with our Creator, and you no, know, in that sense, that person wouldn't be a Muslim. Um, uh, so that's that's where we stand on that. I mean, it's uh, to be a Muslim in the law sense of the word, we have to submit ourselves to. Our Creator, we follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the final prophet. We believe in the words of the Quran, and we believe in the angels, and the you know we believe in heaven and hell, and so forth. So yes, there's Christians that believe these things, but when you associate partners with our Creator, that would exclude you from being considered a Muslim in the uh, you, you know the current modern uh, you know interpretation of what a Muslim is. Uh, but Jesus, peace be upon him. Um, he certainly wasn't praying to himself. He wasn't praying to any trinity. He was praying directly to and only to our creator. And so in that sense of the word, he was indeed a, a Muslim. No doubt about it. If Jesus, if, if, if David Wood, by example, is praying to Jesus, which if he's a Christian, he most likely does. He's praying to Jesus. Not that I believe this is Jesus in this picture, but and Jesus was praying to another, uh, you know, then no, there's no way that, David Wood could be a Muslim, but surely Allah guides those whom he chooses. He has the opportunity to do so. There's been people that are worse than David Wood, if you can believe that, that have converted to Islam, or accepted Islam, reverted to Islam, rather. Uh, so surely Allah guides those whom he chooses. It says, for the, as for those who disbelieve, it matters not if you warn them or do not warn them. They will not believe. Allah set a seal over their hearts and over their hearing, over their eyes is available to them for the penalty they bring upon themselves. So uh, that's my answer for you, Matt. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks so much for uh, thanks so much for coming, folks. Let's give them a round of applause. We appreciate you being here. With that, we'll have an intermission. We'll start the next debate at within thirty minutes. So, thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you in thirty minutes. I saw what you did there, Matt. Folks, if you're watching at home. The yeah. Con 4 no, no, is on November 4th. I should be claiming that I'm a Muslim all the, the entire time. In the case you're far from Texas, hit that subscribe button as all of the Debate Con debates will be live streamed from the channel. I actually can't take it all out of my backpack. Oh, you're on a plane right now, yeah.